Hi, this is Kailana with Hand Me by Kailana. And today I wanna to do something a little different. I wanna share with you my Polynesian culture and teach you how to make poi balls and a few tricks on how to use them. Poi balls are weighted balls on the end of a cord and you have two of them and you swing them in set patterns to do these amazing tricks. Poi balls originate from New Zealand by the Maori people. Shout out to any Kiwis out there. And it is said they were developed by warriors to increase their wrist flexibility in battle. Nowadays, you'll see them in cultural performances. Usually a group will do poi ball tricks and then incorporate Maori dance and chanting. You'll also see non-Maori versions of poi balls where the emphasis is on eye-catching, spectacular tricks. You'll even see them use lighted poi balls, which can be really cool. I'm Native Hawaiian and I'm from Hawaii and I grew up learning how to dance hula, Tahitian, Maori dance, and how to use poi balls. Today in my spare time, I do teach kids these types of dances so that I can pass on that information to the next generation. And although there is that cultural component to poi balls, you don't have to be Polynesian in order to enjoy them. They're a lot of fun for kids and kids at heart, and you can challenge yourself on what tricks you can master. And best of all, you can make your own set of poi balls with easy to find materials, most of which you probably have in your house. Here are the supplies that you'll need, some of which you can substitute with other materials that you might have at hand. Three colors of yarn, needle and thread, or you can use a hot glue gun, scissors, batting and polyfill, or you can use scraps of fabric, clear rubber bands, although that's completely optional, some form of plastic, either a gallon Ziploc bag, grocery bag, or a plastic tablecloth, which I'm using today, and paper. And that's it. So let me explain how you figure out how long to make your poi ball. A poi ball should be the length of your arm. So if you're holding the ball in your hand, it should come up to your shoulder. So when I cut my yarn for my poi ball, I'm going to hold my um, string in my hand and then come up to here to my shoulder. And then I'm going to triple it. That should give me a good measurement of what I need to make a tassel and to make my braid. And I should have leftover after that. I, you could probably get away with just doubling it, but because I want to make sure I have extra because I don't want to go through all that work and find out it's too short um, and yarn is so cheap, I triple it. And then once I get that master length um, for the string, then I'm going to use that as my measurement for all my other strands that I have to cut. And so I need 12 black, 12 red, and 12 white. And then I'm ready to braid. For both poi balls, I'll need a total of 12 strands of each color. And for my arm length tripled, I got 51 inches. And so I've cut them out here. Each poi ball is gonna require a tassel. And for each tassel, I'm going to cut out 12 strands of each of the three colors, and they'll be 10 inches long. Then I'm gonna mix the colors together and put a clear rubber band in the middle. And then I'm gonna do that all over again for my next tassel. I am laying out my yarn for my first poi ball. I'm going to be making a six strand round braid using three pieces of yarn for each strand. So on my left side, I have red, black, and white, and I'm going to have the mirror image on my right side. I'm measuring down five inches to put a clear rubber band so that I can make sure that my knot is at the right length. I'm going to put the yarn together and tie a knot at the clear rubber band. I'm then going to insert my tassel that I made earlier into the knot before I close it. Now I'm going to pull my knot very tight and then push all the pieces of yarn up so I can create my final tassel. I'm going to use a clear rubber band to secure it right above the knot. And then I'm going to tie another piece of yarn around the clear elastic so I can cover that up. Wow. 
Now I'm going to measure four inches and then cut off all the excess so I have a nice, clean, uniform tassel. Then I just have to do this all over again for my second poi. Now I'm going to work on my braid. So I've put the tassel inside of a drawer and closed it right below the knot so I can keep it secure. I'm going to separate my yarn into six strands. Red, black, and white, three strands each on the left side and then the mirror image on the right side. I'm going to take the red strand on my right side, bring it behind and up between the black and white strands on my left side. Then the red strand on the left side will come behind and up between the black and white strand on the right side. This will create an X. And then I'm going to pull all of my strands tight. Then I'm going to repeat the pattern again. Black strand on my right side will come behind and up between the white and the red strands on the left side. The black strand on my left side will come behind and up between the white and the red strand on the right side. This again will create an X and I'm going to pull all my strands tight. Then I'm bringing the white strand on my right side behind and up between the red and black on my left side. The white strand on my left side behind and up between the red and the black strand on my right side. Then I'm just gonna continue to repeat this pattern and keep all the strands really tight throughout this process. As you can see, we are creating a chevron pattern. I'm gonna continue the braid until I can hold the tassel in my hand and the braid comes up to my shoulder. I will end the braid by tying the left and right side into a simple knot. I've now created the braids for both poi balls. So I'm gonna work on the ball part of it. I'm measuring the width and length of an existing poi ball I have, and it's about three inches each. I'm creating the base of the ball by scrunching up some craft paper I had on hand. You can also use newspaper or printer paper. After making a second paper base, I'm going to attach them to my braids. So on one side of the braid, I have my tassel, and on the other side, I'm gonna have my loose yarn that I ended the braid on. I'm going to take those loose strands and tie it around my ball so I can secure it to the braid. It's important to tie the yarn so that you can keep the paper ball as centered as possible on the braid. I'm going to cut a piece of batting large enough to fit my paper base inside. Then I'm going to cover the entire base with some polyfill because I want to smooth out the edges and make it softer. You can also use fabric to do the same thing. I'm sewing around the sides of the batting so I can pull it together and kind of create a pocket for my paper base to sit inside. And as it closes up, I'm going to start sewing it into the braid and around the sides so that I can smooth it out and secure it to the paper base. I took my time to make sure that the ball was as smooth as possible wherever there was any excess batting or polyfill. I just added a line of stitches and that worked out perfectly. If you didn't want to use a needle and thread, you can always use a hot glue gun. Just don't add too much because you don't want to add hard spots to your base or add too much weight. Now we need to cover the ball with some plastic to protect it. So you can use whatever plastic you want, a Ziploc bag, a grocery bag. I'm using a white tablecloth that I got at the dollar store. Since the tablecloth is so thin, I folded it over three times so it would be thick enough and then cut out a square for the size of my ball. I covered the ball with it and pulled it up as tight as possible so it would be smooth and then secured it with a clear rubber band. I'm now going to cut off the excess plastic and leave just about a half an inch above the rubber band and then cover the rubber band with a piece of white yarn. Do that again and we have finished poi balls. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.
Now it's your turn. So you hold a poi ball at the braid right below the knot and you hold it between your thumb and forefinger and you'll use those two fingers to manipulate your poi ball. The remaining three fingers will just hold your tassel very lightly. Let's start by swinging the ball forward. You're gonna wanna practice swinging your ball forward with both hands on the side of your body and in front of your body. Once you have that down, we can start learning some tricks. I'm gonna first show you a basic cross. You start by swinging both poise on the side of your body in a big forward circle. Your palms should be facing forward, parallel to the ground. It's really important to keep your poi balls as vertical as possible. Common mistake is to let your poi balls go slightly off that vertical axis. This will cause you to hit yourself or get your poi balls tangled up. After swinging your poi balls on the side of your body, on the upswing, you cross your hands right over left, turning your palms down as you cross. On the next upswing, you're gonna uncross. This move is called the butterfly, and it's a bit more challenging. You're gonna start with making circles in the front of your body. Your palms will be facing each other and the circles will be going in towards your body. As you make the circles, you're moving your hands closer together. Your right hand will be slightly higher than the left. When your hands are together, on the downswing, you'll move your left poi into your right hand between the pinky and ring finger. Your right palm remains facing toward your left side. To keep the balls rotating, you just do a simple up and down movement with your wrists. You shouldn't be moving your entire arm or making big movements. To get out of the butterfly, you grab the left poi in your left hand on the downswing between your thumb and forefinger on your left hand. Then you can seamlessly continue with your circles in front of your body. This last move is called a three beat weave and my personal favorite. To learn this move, you start by putting your left hand straight out in front of your body at shoulder level. Then with the point in your right hand, you're gonna circle on your right side and then on the upswing, you're gonna cross over your left hand, circle on your left hand and then cross back to your right side. On the next upswing, you're gonna do the same thing but cross under your left hand this time. You're basically making a figure eight over your left hand and then below your left hand. Once you got it on your right side, then you just need to learn it on your left. But this time, start with your left poi going under your right arm and then over your right arm. After you can get it with both hands, you just need to combine it. So your right hand will make a figure eight going over your left hand at the same time as your left hand will be making a figure eight under your right hand. And then you'll switch. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Bye.